the big problem is if, if while well, you want to subsidize your local public, and if you raise the price, you know you're going to have political protests, and, and you're going to get all kinds of difficulty that way. So you don't want to do that. But at the same time, unless you do price it at the world price, and here's the economist coming in, you're going to get wasteful use of it. You know, even free love after a while, you begin to waste those, those resources, you know, and so you, you want to have a proper price uh, 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 for that. So um, this, this was an argument, and Putin ultimately agreed, the, the Duma ultimately agreed, they would gradually begin to raise the price to the, to the world market, as, uh, depending on what kind of price a Gazprom was getting it uh, generally. So this is already beginning to happen. Of course, the trouble is, world energy prices keep going up. So you say, well, we'll bring it up to the level of uh, 2006, but we're, we're pretty far beyond that. But the, the goal is, within the next uh, a year or two, to make it comparable to, indeed, uh, make sure that it's used efficiently, and, if nothing else, to make sure there's something to, to export. So it's a problem they recognize, and it's, it's one that they seem to be coping with. And so far, there haven't been these protests that uh, if they did it all at once, uh, probably would happen. But the trouble is it's, you're chasing a, uh, a moving target. Uh, and the here. president has also said in uh, uh, Medvedev that he wants to develop industry. Well, if you're going to develop indigenous industry, you must have energy to supply yeah. uh, those, those factories. I think I promised you, please. Yeah. please. Am I to use a mic? Oh, thank you. Um, we are talking about much wealth, which would imply ownership. What is the status of the legal system in terms of private property rights? Have there been any reforms done? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, my, uh, my previous book was called The Piratization of Russia, which really looked at this uh, kind of thing. And, and this is, in some ways, an extension of that. Uh, you could own private property. Uh, and you know, so you know the companies have been private. They they took the ministry of the petroleum industry and broke it up in, into all these different companies. Although Rosneft, the state still owned the majority of shares in Rosneft. Uh, Gazprom at one point uh, state ownership fell to 38 percent. Putin saw this could be a problem that it could be taken over by foreigners, and so he's pushed it back up. So the state now owns 51 percent of Gazprom. So, but you can own private shares in it. The trouble is, if you cross the state, I mean, if you counter what, uh, what, whatever Putin wants, Putin gets. If you don't do that, then you run the risk of uh, having visits from a whole variety of things. The internal tax people. You know, we had something like this in the United States under Nixon. You got visits from the IRS if, if you were doing something that the government, and that was one of the reasons why this led to the impeachment. The, the, the Russians call it the creative use of uh, administrative, administrative resources. That's right. That's yes. a wonderful yes. phrase. Just like they did in Germany. Yes. <laughs> well, well, it's a, it's the same it's the same notion of the communists. But here here it's it, the, the variety. You know, it's not just limited to the tax people. The tax people went out after Khodorkovsky and Yukos. But now what is happening is that uh, BP and Shell got visits from the pollution people. Uh, they violated uh, pollution. They were polluting. Although, if you've ever been in a Russian oil field before uh, this n new era, uh, the Russian companies, Soviet companies, were notorious for the way they wasted resources because it was underpriced. It was just just a you know terrible violation of 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 nature. But you know, one way or another, if they want you, they're going to get you, and and you go into this. That's why you know. Should we go to the shining path? You just you, you come in and you're going to take your knocks. For me, uh, it's humiliating, and I've just written something more uh, just about this, where the president of Shell Oil, operating in Sakhalin, says, "Okay, it's not 10 billion dollars. Our expenses are it's it's uh, 20 billion dollars," and then uh, he is told, "You've violated the environmental rules, and uh, unless you agree to a." I'm going to make you a proposition you can't refuse, like, you know, out of The Godfather. Um, unless you agree to that, we're going to take over the whole company. So they agree to let Gazprom come in uh, at a fraction. Of they, Gazprom bought it for about $6, 7000000000 billion. Uh, already, 
uh, Shell has put in $10 billion, and the chairman of, uh, of Shell Oil says, we're happy, you know, hit me again. We're happy uh, for this kind of thing. But you play out, it's their baseball, it's their baseball bat, it's their baseball field, it's their baseball glove, and uh, you want to operate, you've got you've to have to just simply allow for... They can still confiscate it. They can still confiscate it. And this is what uh, Kartakovsky, every one of the oligarchs knows that this could happen. I'll take something from the other side. Uh, well, you had your hand up a long time behind. Uh, but go ahead. And then we'll come yeah. back to Dr. Peter. Um, in the 90s, uh, Gazprom and most of the Russian manufacturing uh, were still based upon an allocation type of system, and a lot of their entrance into the Western world was using variable pricing. And it, it seemed that fixed pricing investment just wasn't part of their vocabulary. Uh, has that changed from what you're seeing, that they understand uh, the need for long-term uh, investments and uh, fixed price yes, issues? Yes, uh, they have um, indeed uh, signed these long-term contracts. But um, like other energy companies, if prices go up as much as they have, there are ways of convincing you that uh, maybe we should make an adjustment in what is happening. Uh, there's a fire in the pipeline. Uh, something goes wrong. So while they indeed uh, are happy to sign these long-term contracts, they usually uh, now are smart enough to know that there are other things that they should allow for some kind of adjustment mechanism there. Uh, and, you know, in fairness to them, this, if this is the world price, why should you be locked in there uh, forever? So, so th uh, <clears throat> they're, not, they're not taking a beating. Where, where Gazprom is taking a beating, and somebody had mentioned it here earlier in the discussion, is that because it's a national champion, that means that the state works on your behalf externally, and you carry the flag, but it also means that you have commitments internally. And by that, it means Putin has said, hey, we're going to have the Olympics, the Winter Olympics in Sochi. We've got to have somebody finance the building of this. I think that would be a good uh, project for you to undertake. No commercial uh, relevance for it. Taking the resources that are being generated elsewhere and using them in a whole series of infrastructure projects that should be rightfully the domain of the state, not of a private company. So, you know, that's where Gazprom has its problems. But in terms of contracts, as far as I know, uh, they're, they're still doing okay and they're getting, they're managing to get uh, long-term prices that are adjustable one way or another so that they, they don't uh, suffer uh, this way. If I might take a prerogative, but well, it's really the other side of not taking a prerogative. Since I'm only president-elect, we, Peter had his hand up, we better let the cur still current president of Southern Center ask a question. I feel like Putin here. Not <laughs> <laughs> the oil. Uh, if, if you have a country that has 34 million Muslims and a population of something less than 130 million, you have uh, birth rates and free fall, you have a, a mortality rate which is dropping almost to Soviet standards, uh, and you've got problems like you've indicated with the Chinese, uh, is it not possible that one day uh, the, the Russian authorities might look at the United States as a possibly a very viable ally because, you know, they're going to be uh, they're going to be outflanked. They, you can't have a great nation unless you have people. And they don't have and will not have the people. Well, I, I, you know, this, I mentioned earlier that, that Putin, Russia's problem, biggest problem right now, well, it's, so many, the you know, list is pretty long, but one, of the, one near the top is the fact that it shrinks 700,000 people a year. Uh, and, and if you look at a population tree, one of the diagrams I pass out in, you know, in other lectures is the population tree, which is normally a, a, a kind of a pyramid or a triangle, where what you do is you take people by age. After one year of age, some people die, so that shrinks until you get up to the 60s. And, you know, life expectancy now for, for Russian men uh, is about 58, 59. So if we were doing this right now in Moscow, there would be very few of us in the room. I mean, you know, that's... Uh, uh, so women, it's a, women, it's a little... 